Hey everyone, Rob here, and I hope you enjoyed the holidays. I am back after taking a couple days break from all of this to enjoy Christmas and, and all of the holidays with family and friends. But we are back now with big news on what's been going on here in Iceland regarding earthquakes, volcanoes, eruptions, and what's to come for the people of Grindavik and for the people of Iceland. Now, what we're looking at here is a chart showing the deformation and the movement of the GPS stations at Svartsengi. Now, what we're looking at here is you can see the date along the bottom. We can see November, December, and we can see these sort of movements of the north, east, and vertical movements from the GPS stations. What we're noticing here, we can see December, of course, was the eruption. We can see around November was big movements there. We can see the earthquakes releasing pressure, and then it continues to build releasing pressure again from the eruption and then continuing to go back up because this eruption was very short-lived. What we're looking at though is the pressure building back up, the deformation continuing to increase and now getting back to the levels, if not going a little bit higher than we saw previously. We see these big uh, sort of changes in the movement. So very likely that there's going to be a eruption coming up in the next few days, so they say. But before we get to that, the people of Grindavik are still going to be allowed to stay home for the next few days, and they're going to be doing so at their own risk. There is no rescue team in Grindavik. Of course, it's the holidays. Everyone wants to be with their friends. And the response of rescue teams will therefore be very limited. And this is all coming from an announcement from the police chief in the Sudnes region also stating that the Icelandic Meteorological Agency's risk assessment map is still valid until 6 p.m. on the 29th. So we're looking at a couple more days on that. And according to them, the current risk assessment map, there's considerable risk of earthquakes, cracks, and just sort of movement in the Grindavik area. Uh, it's subject to change at short notice, of course. Now, the announcement specifically reiterates that volcanic eruptions can start in the vicinity of Grindavik at a very short notice, and it may be very difficult to ensure the safety of those staying or spending the night inside of a danger zone. And again, those who go into Grindavik or go into the danger zone uh, do so at their own risk. If they do need help, they can, of course, call the local police number, which is 112, and that's you know the 911 of Iceland. And if an eruption does start, in or near Grindavik, an SMS message will then be sent to mobile phones in the area with a text saying evacuate, you know, leave the area quickly and safely, call 112 if you need help, evacuate, you know, so everyone needs to sort of get, get around. Police are going to continue to patrol in and around Grindavik, around the clock, you know, 24 hours a day, and the possible escape routes are uh, from Nesvegur, Söderstrandsvegur, and Grindavik Vegur. so it's a couple streets that go outside of Grindavik. But, um, there are indications, as we saw from the original chart, that volcanic eruptions may erupt again around the end of the year. So we're looking at just a couple of days away. And the latest measurements coming from the Meteorological Agency since Christmas Day show that the land rise in Svartosangi has then reached the same height as measured on the 11th and 12th of December or six to seven days before the eruption that began on December 18th. So again, referencing back to this. Geoscientists Benedict Ofergson and Thorvald Thorosson both say that the development of this in recent days rep resembles the development before the previous eruption that we saw just, you know, not long ago. And when asked, Thorvald says that the land can either end with a magma run, as what happened on November 10th, or an eruption to what we saw earlier in December. So there's two scenarios. He's asking if he thinks it's more likely... Um, which one of the two, he mentions a volcanic eruption. And he's saying this could happen in the first week of January, uh, or possibly sooner, you know, you never know. The mayor of Grindavik, Fanar Jonasson, says there is a certain amount of uncertainty, especially in light of all of this. It's expected the situation will be resolved, uh, or something will happen between Christmas and New Year's. And then a new announcement should be issued by the police chief about the next steps going forward. Um, and again, as a reminder, the police chief announced on December 22nd that the people of Grindavik could celebrate Christmas in their home. And it's believed that uh, on Christmas, there were about 50 to 60 houses that had people inside of it. So 
that's uh, it's, it's good news. We do also have from the news, uh, here's a picture of Grindavik as well, um, coming from the news saying that they're still allowed to go to Grindavik and stay at home based on all of this updated map. Um, and again, it's valid until 6 p.m. on December 29th. But of course, we are estimating that there's going to be a new assessment map uh, coming into there. People should be aware, though, that uh, this isn't an open invitation for everyone to go into Grindavik. You do need to still have a reason to go there. And it's usually residents and businesses that are that are really going to be going there, as well as a couple media that are allowed and invited to go in there. But again, response teams are, are not really going to be there. So it's at your own risk. Uh, we do have a very exciting thing here, which is a interactive 3D scan of the entire Grindavik town. If we take a look here, we're just going to click on this and load it up. And this is from Efla, which is a uh, a sort of uh, a company here in Iceland that's working on the assessment of the Grindavik town. And we'll just go full screen here so we can get a good look. This is a interactive 3D map of Grindavik. And we can zoom in and use the tools that are built in here to see various aspects of the town and, and the damage that's been caused. They're gonna be using this to determine insurance and, and various other assessments related to it. So if we take a look, we can zoom out and let's just try to find some of these areas that are more badly damaged than others. And we can see that um, for the most part, it's isolated, where was it? Here it is, in sort of this center of town really you can see the cracks and the damage going on here and we can navigate and sort of zoom in and see what's going on so if you want to play around with this take a look at Grindavik as a town itself and you can see each of the houses yeah some of the uh, 3d models are not the best but you can definitely explore this and uh, and get a feel for what it's like to be in this town there's a bunch of different views we have sort of this helicopter view which we can sort of zoom in and just use this helicopter to navigate through. We can see some of the cracks here. As we get closer, we can see what has occurred and the level of damage that has been done in Grindavik. Uh, we can see here, this is sort of the main area, what we're looking at now, where all of the news has been focusing on, just because of the extent of the damage is, is quite visible. And you can see here, big areas, uh, whoops, that need uh, need a lot of repair. But again, play around with this. I'll put a link in the description. It's really quite a great uh, a great tool to be using. Uh, and thanks to Efla for providing it to everyone to take a look at and uh, and look at the town of Grindavik and, and how it is now. Because to be honest, I mean, with eruptions now being talked about again between now and sort of the new year, hopefully uh, this town is sort of safe from all of that. But you never know. Blue Lagoon. Who knows what's going to happen with that? I mean, it's still a danger area, um, but we will uh, hope for the best and hope that the new eruption does not damage anything and it proves to be another tourist eruption like what we saw previously with uh, Fagros Fatl. But only time will tell. So I hope everyone had a great holiday. I know some people still have it going on. It's the 27th, so we had Christmas and Boxing Day. And then, of course, we have New Year's Eve coming up, which is a huge thing here in Iceland. I'll definitely be posting something about there, about New Year's Eve. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll throw up a, a live cam or something like that just so that everyone can sort of celebrate the New Year's watching it in Iceland before uh, the people in, say, North America go off and do their New Year's Eve celebrations as well. So until then, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone had a great holidays. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you like everything you want to keep up to date. If I missed anything, be sure to put it in the comments. And until next time, thanks so much.